Hello everybody, what's up? How have you guys been? How's everyone been hanging? Doing everybody been good? Yeah? Cool. <laughs> So, um, welcome back. I'm glad y'all are here. If you are here, then that means you like art, and so do I. And so, um, we have something in common, I guess. So, sorry I haven't been on this channel for a while. It's been a month. It's been a, it's been a year, but it's been a month. It's been a month. What's that noise? People over, people over yonder <laughs> being real loud. So guys, I'm back, and um, I've been making a lot of random stuff for future videos, but I just haven't been like, I haven't loved any of it yet. So I'm going to put out stuff and whatnot, but um, it's just been taking a while for me to work on these things that I'm going to put out in the next coming weeks and stuff. But on good news, it's been snowing recently. And it's also Hanukkah. First day was yesterday. So, yeah. So, happy Hanukkah to you guys. And guess what? I uh, found some socks upstairs in my room that I didn't remember I had, but I found them. And I was like, dude, they look like zebras. So, guys, without further ado, this video is about Olive Oatman, and she was a really interesting history character. Um, that lived a long, long time ago in the 1800s, so I decided to paint her. And if you guys have any other video ideas, um, stay to the end of the video and comment them below. Olive Oatman, or otherwise well known as the woman with the blue tattoo, was a Mormon traveler from Illinois. You may recognize her as there was a character based off of her named Eva Toole from the AMC show Hell on Wheels. Olive Oatman was born on September 7, 1837 to Royce and Mary Ann Oatman. She was one of seven siblings, and the Oatman children ranged in age from 17 years old to one year old. In 1850, the Oatman family joined a wagon train headed for California, led by James C. Brewster. James Brewster was the co-founder of the Church of Christ, a sect in the Latter-day Saint movement. The Brewster immigrants, which numbered in between 85 and 93, departed from Independence, Missouri on August 5, 1850. The wagon train split up around New Mexico, and the Oatmans, along with several other families, headed south for Tucson, Arizona. The party had reached Maricopa Wells when they were informed that the trail ahead was barren and dangerous, and that the Native Americans ahead were very hostile and that they would risk their lives if they proceeded further. The other families decided to stay behind, and the Oatman family would soon find themselves traveling alone. The Oatman family was almost completely annihilated in what became to be known as the Oatman Massacre on the banks of the Gila River 80 to 90 miles east of what is now known as Arizona. The Oatman Massacre occurred on February 18, 1851. A group of Yavapai tribesmen attacked the Oatmans. Royce, Mary, and their four children were killed at the scene, and their son Lorenzo was badly injured. Lorenzo regained consciousness to find his family killed and Olive and Marianne missing. He eventually reached a settlement where he was treated for his wounds. Olive and her sister were taken captive and forced to walk the nearly 100 mile journey to the Yavapai village. The way the Yavapai treated them was threatening and Oatman said that she thought that they would have killed them. However, the girls were used as slaves to forage for food, lugging water and firewood, and for other menial tasks. They were frequently beaten, and after a year of living with the Yavapai people, during one of the tribe's trade meetings with another group made up of Mohev Native Americans, the daughter of the Mohev chief saw the girls and their poor treatment during the trading expedition. She tried to make a trade for the girls. The Yavapais refused, but the chief's daughter, Topeka, was persistent and returned once more offering a trade for the girls. Eventually, the Yavapai gave in, and they traded the girls for two horses some vegetables, blankets, and beads. 
after which they were forced to walk several hundred miles to the Moahive village where the Gila River met the Colorado River near what is now known as Needles, California. They were immediately taken in by the family of the tribal leader. Oatman later spoke with fondness of the Moahaves, whose treatment of her was superior to the treatment she had received when first captured. Both girls were tattooed on their chins and arms in keeping with the tribal custom for those who were tribal members to ensure that they would be welcomed into the land of the dead and that the Moahev ancestors would recognize them. Olive was also given a clan nickname called Spansa due to a drought in 1855, Mary Ann, who was around the age of 10 or 11, died of starvation along with several other Moahaves. Olive remained with the Moahaves, choosing not to reveal herself to white railroad surveyors who spent nearly a week in the Moahave Valley, trading and socializing with the tribe in February 1854. Because she didn't know that Lorenzo had survived the massacre, she believed she had no immediate family, and the Moahave raised her as their own. When Olive was 19, a rumor had arised that a white girl was living with the Moahaves. And Francisco, a Yuma Indian messenger, arrived at the village with a message from the authorities at Fort Yuma for her return. In the beginning, the Moahave were reluctant and resisted the request, having already accepted her as one of their own, even denying that Olive was white. Meanwhile, Francisco withdrew to the homes of other nearby Moahaves. He made an attempt to persuade the Moahaves to part with Oatman. Trade items were included this time, including blankets and white horse. They started receiving threats that the whites would destroy the Moahaves if they did not release Oatman. After some discussion, it was agreed upon that Olive should leave and the Moahaves decided to accept the terms, and she was escorted to Fort Yuma in a 20-day journey. Before entering the fort, Oatman was given western clothing borrowed from a wife of an army officer. As she was bare-chested and dressed in a traditional Moahave skirt with no covering above her waist. Within days of her arrival, she was reunited with her brother, Lorenzo, who she had thought had been dead, and their meeting was in the headlines across the West. In 1858, Pastor Royal B. Stratton published a book titled Captivity of the Oatman Girls, which he had sold 30,000 copies of and sold out three editions in one year, a bestseller in that era. The royalties from the book paid for Olive and her brother's college education. Olive met John B. Fairchild, the man that she would later marry, at a lecture she was giving alongside Stratton in Michigan. Fairchild had lost a brother in Arizona in 1854 due to an attack by the Native Americans during a cattle drive the same time in which Olive was living with the Moahave people. Upon meeting John, the two were engaged and married by 1965. The two settled in Sherman, Texas, where Olive became Sherman's veiled lady. She also took it upon herself to become involved in charity work and became particularly interested in helping a local orphanage. The two were never able to have their own children, but they did adopt a little girl and named her Mary Elizabeth after both of their mothers. Olive died of a heart attack on March 20th, 1903 at the age of 65. There is little known of what actually happened to Olive Oatman during her time with the Native Americans. In response to the rumors, Olive denied that she had been married to a Moahave or was ever raped or sexually mistreated by either tribe. In Stratton's book, she declared that, to the honor of these savages, let it be said that they never offered the least unchaste abuse to me. In her older age, she even met with one of the Moahave tribal leaders in New York where they reportedly spoke fondly of old times. So there you guys have it, Olive Oatman, a very interesting history character. And if you have any history characters that you are really uh, a fan of, then comment them below and you might see them in a video or something. Alright guys, that is the end of this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, then subscribe. Stay positive and I will see you guys next time. Bye!